All right, all right. I think we're going good again. Um, I do not remember having these type of technical difficulty, but I do understand. Could be season, could be timing. <laughs> I don't want to be <laughs> over superstitious, overly superstitious. But anyway, um, we're going to let everyone go ahead and jump, jump back on uh, because we were going, going, going in. And, uh, yeah, it was one of those things that, um, you know, I really hope this, this is blessing somebody. Um, what's up, Cam? Great to see you, brother. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, in, it's you got to be secure. <laughs> got to be secure. And we're back, right? <laughs> what's up, Jazz82, uh, right? So we're going to continue, uh, hopefully at pace. All right. So um, I'm just watch the replay back again. All right, right, right. So um, hopefully it doesn't. Um, I don't know where I left left off. I think I left off on um, the, uh, you know, being uh, obviously we're. Uh, let me just go ahead and start from the top. I'm um, not the complete top of what I was talking about. You guys got some some good. Um, can you talk about how uh, easily offended this generation is and what we can do to help it? All right. So yeah, that's um, definitely something that uh, you have to do. Is you have to allow the the healing power of the Holy Ghost to deal with the wounds that you have. All right, you have to identify them. You have to be ugly honest with yourself. I'm talking ugly, brutally honest. You know, why am I insecure? How do these things, where do these things come from? And the first time you do it, it's going to be uh, kind of, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be awkward because you're delving into your past. And yes, you may know bad things about your past. Oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. But when we start talking about the deep emotions of it, my brother, my sister, you have to be strong. You got to look at those things. Got to go in there. Got to go get get down in the in the in the muck and in the mire, you know, ugly honest. Get get down in there and just pick those things up so you can start dealing with them. And in in time, you'll begin to heal those wounds by bringing them to Jesus. Jesus, what do I do with it? What is your worst way to do with it? How should I approach this? You know, it was like it was like what said in Isaiah. Isaiah was prophesying, and he mentioned numerous times about. Jesus, uh, or Jesus, about um, the power of God. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as uh, scarlet, I think it is, or crimson, <laughs> they'll be white as snow, right? Um, so you have to go way in there and, and, and find those things and, um, and, and take those things to God. Say, God, yeah, this is where I messed up. This is my doing. This is what they did to me. I forgive them. You know, you have to go deep in there and that's going to make you more of a secure person. Why? Because your wounds are healed. If your wounds are healed, then you can operate a lot better. And if you, here we go, join us at the United Live. Okay, we're going to talk about, um, the, I think the, the number one, yeah, number one most powerful way to very quickly start getting over those insecurities. All right, we're going to be talking about that at the United Live. So get your tickets there, like more than 30% off. So, um, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, more than 50% off because we're, we're, we're not, we're not doing it in person. So, um, uh, again, by the leading of the Holy Ghost, you want to do that. You want to, um, you want to make sure that you, uh, that you have those things secure, those things tied down. And again, if you join us at the United Live, you're going to figure out how to do that pretty quickly. So. And no, it's not, oh, this is what the psychologist said. No, it's, no, it's Bible, okay? And it's not like, oh, it'll take you 9 to 12 months. No, it's going to take you, like, very, very quickly. You'll be able to identify, oh, that's that. Okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I, this is the, the strategies and everything. I mean, the strat, man, that's where it's at. All right. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump back into these uh, questions. All right. Um, why is it important to have a pastor versus just attending church online? Okay, cool. So the thing is, is that, uh, can you talk about it's bad. okay, I think this is, uh, um, okay, cool. So there's like a note that, that was left in this. It says, can you talk about how everyone needs a pastor and how online church is a great resource, especially with what happened in 2020 and 2021, but we can't just live off of those experiences because there is no authority slash accountability in it. 
Yeah, so for sure, there is a absolute necessity for a pastor, um, someone in your life to, to um, give you uh, wisdom and guidance, all right? Uh, the thing is, is that people, you got to have pastor man or lady, young person. Everyone needs to have that leadership, okay? Because if you don't, you're no matter how big you get, you're going to need that, okay? You need, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. If you don't have even one counselor that you're submitted to, and, and submitted to means you're going to do this thing, and they tell you something different, and you go with what they told, to, tell you to do. That's submission. Submission is like, okay, I thought I was going to do this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. Okay? Look in the Old Testament. Every king, ruler of many lands, kings of Israel, kings of Judah, um, uh, Ahasuerus in the book of Esther, Xerxes, all right? They all had what? Wise men around them. They had wise men when they were young. They had wise men when they got older. They had wise men when, before they died. David has had wise men around. People who can help you make decisions, not tell you. So you don't want people who to, to tell you that you're thinking right, okay? Because you're already thinking right. <laughs> you're okay. The where, where you're thinking right, you're thinking right. Let's say that's 60% or 70% of, of the way you think is right. You want people, like, no one needs to come and say, oh, yeah, you know, puff you up and say, yeah, you got this. Yeah, that's the way to think. Yeah, that's, a, you don't need people who, you need people who to say, yeah, wait a second. Okay. Yeah, that 70% is right, but here's 2% that you can change. Or yeah, that 80% is great, but like, here's the other bit that you're missing. And they give you off, they, they offer you bigger and broader perspective. Humans are, you know, God made us a so, social creatures. And when we push away from that, the, the, that, the other people's input, wise people, smart people's input. Okay. We opt to be solo. Now that's the ego stroke and, and, and inverted. That's you attempting to find security, but truly people, those or those people who are truly secure, they don't need someone to, uh, puff them up all the time. Yeah. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, that's the right thing to think. No, those people who are truly secure are going to be okay with someone saying, no, 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 do it this way. No, 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 that's not the right thing. No, that's not the right thing. Not the right thing. Da, 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 da. And that, that person molds you. And that person shapes you. That person oftentimes is your pastor. That person, person with people who, got, who have smart spiritual parents, those are your parents. Obey your parents in the Lord for this right. The first um, uh, commandment, first law with promise attached to it. You'll live long if you do that. You need people like that. Why do you need people like that? Because you can't do it by yourself. Okay? No lone rangers here. No just, you know, big eyes and and little yous. So people who often people who who say that they don't need a pastor, they they often struggle with submission issues and they're often spiritual midgets. No offense to people who you know. They're often stunted. All right? They stop growing. They're they're spiritually weak. So when you tell them something and you start teaching down a certain line or talking down a certain line, they're spiritually weak. They're spiritual midges. Sorry, again, this is offensive. But, um, yeah, so what ends up happening is they stay scented and they don't grow spiritually. Think about Paul. And everyone wants to be Paul. Everyone wants to be the, the apostles. Oh, I'll just pray and let God give me divine revelation. How, how often do you think he, that happened with Paul? Yes, it did happen, okay? But Paul, from what theologians would say, he, he knew the, the um, he can quote the entire book of Moses. Like he knew the law. Like he, he, he really, he studied it. He was under the, the best of the best, under Rabbi Gamaliel, okay? That was his mentor. That was his pastor. That was his, you know, person, all right? And he knew the law. I mean, he, he, he knew it, okay? And so, not he like and then paul is going to go go uh and submit himself to the leadership of the apostles okay they were led by the spirit but paul still submit i don't get people man. anyway but um paul uh submitted himself to the leadership of the apostles the apostles what were they doing they're running the church so they go they're out there running the church they're they're doing this they're doing that and you know, when Paul has his conversion experience on the, uh, the road to Damascus, he then goes submit. So there's no room for lack of submission. There's no room for lack. If you don't have a mentor in your life, you don't have someone who can tell you something that you that you don't want to hear or that you kind of like, that hurts you a bit, but you have to correct and course correct and stuff like that. If you don't have that person, you're not living as a disciple of Christ. You're not. It's impossible for you to. Why? Because, you, you know, 
unless you're God manifesting the flesh, the word made flesh, like Jesus was, okay, you're, you can't just get your orders directly from, from, <laughs> from God. Now you do get orders directly from God, but one of the orders in the, in the, in the, uh, and it was funny because, you know, Jesus was, uh, let me see. Jesus demonstrated submission as well. So you can't, you can't, I mean, and no, no one's, uh, yeah, no, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one can do that. All right. So, uh, Peter, the apostles were submitted to Jesus. They had leadership in their life. They had mentors. Um, uh, the early church had pastors. They had mentors. Paul, um, Moses, he was submitted. Okay. He didn't walk under someone 24, seven, 365. Like, uh, we have it today. But today we're in a better position because we have people who are assigned to help us grow spiritually. And, and those people lead churches. Those people are pastors. We have someone assigned to Moses. He had Jethro. He had his father-in-law. You could see submission there. All right. Also, you'll notice that people who have a, who are pure in heart, they can be older in years, but they still are surrounded by other people that are younger than them that can tell them, hey, do this. Hey, maybe this is the best way to go with respect and, and all that. So, so submission doesn't stop. You have to stay submitted. So people, as going back to the question, the question is, why is it so important to have a pastor versus just attending church online? It's important to have a pastor because you have someone one-on-one -on -one working with you to shave off those things and correct you and get you to the place to where you're fashioned after the image of Christ. You right now, don't play, right? Right now, you are not fashioned after the image of Christ. Right now, I'm not fashioned after the image of Christ. Neither are they. But if we can use the word of God to help each other smooth out and fashion ourselves after the image of Christ, guess what? We're fulfilling the whole purpose of us being Christians. Why? To be after the image of Christ. Or what is that? To be after the image of Christ. So you need a pastor. Online, you just get what you want to hear. And sometimes you, you kind of feel a little bit of conviction, so it kind of gives you a little pizzazz, like, ooh, man, okay. I'm, 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 I'm doing something right as a Christian, right? I feel a little bit of conviction. No, you need someone who can get in there and mold you and shape you. So that's why if you're watching online, if you're doing that stuff, like, that's great, okay? It's good, and it's not the end-all, be-all. You need to plug into someone who can... Boom, boom, boom. You need to change that. You need to pray. You need to pray through that. That's not right. This is it. And, and, and someone who's pure in heart, which is what Jesus is coming back for, the church that Jesus is coming back for, will submit to that even if the person is not right. What do I mean by right? I meant like even though even if the person has flaws. If the person has flaws, that's okay. Because I'm not concerned about their flaws. I'm concerned about me being right by God. And if you can, if you focus on that, but it takes some security. It actually goes back to what we were talking about earlier, because he's going to mess with your wounds. You're infected. He's a, if he's a, if your pastor's a good good physician, <laughs> a good doctor, he's going to go in there and he's going to hey, this needs to go, that needs to go. You got to stop doing that. Da 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 da. Or maybe your pastor or your spiritual authority, your leadership. All right, but in this case, we're talking about pastors, because your parents will do it too, and they may hurt you. Okay. But they're just cleaning you out. Why? So you can be fashion after the image of Christ. They may miss, make mistakes. They mistake something. They may be dead on. Okay? You still need them. Just like we all need each other. And you you won't be like, you will never get to the age where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm done needing people to submit to. That's just an, a principle within living for God. If you skip that principle, you're not really living for God. You're living for yourself because what no one anyway. No one can tell you no one can tell you like what to do. And God's gonna tell you what to do through the mouth of a man of God. So um Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Um next question. Oh, um yeah, versus just attending church online, yeah. You don't you don't want to do that. Just do that. You need a pastor. Is fornication more than just having sex before marriage? Okay. Uh, and a, a little side note on this is what to do when I have strong sexual urges. Well, it's definitely not to go start having sex with people. Like, oh, I got this little, 
I got. I hope. Okay, you guys mind me being twenty? I'm about twenty six. Okay, my birthday a couple weeks ago or last week. All right, is it okay if I if I like say things at twenty? How, how, what age age group we got here? All right, if it's, it's I got a little put the little uh, PG thirteen on there. The R are restricted to widow ears. I'm just gonna be real, um, and uh, go to answer this question. Um, and I'll do so in a polite way, <laughs> but uh, in a way that's actually, you know, getting the job done. All right, cool. So um, is fornication more than just having sex before marriage? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, first off, the biblical definition is like, okay, so back then you had a ton of people that are like, you had a ton. Ooh, okay, I won't say that. Very, um, what's the word for that? A, a synonym, because I don't want to be too too um, inconsiderate of uh, male and female. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can I be counted as a child for just for a day? Yeah, let everyone put their seatbelts on because we're going to go. I'm not going to say that. I'll be respectful. Um, But what is it? Um, I'm trying to think of a word that's not that word. I don't know a word that's not that word. I don't know. Um. Also, who is going to watch for your soul? Exactly. You, no, that is not the word. The word that I'm thinking uh, maybe, uh, if I fall out from him using the S word, somebody revive me. That's funny. What's up, everybody? Chloe, I see you on there. Shalomite, Sh- Shalomite, Shulamite, Shulamite. Oh, okay. I like that. Shulamite. Um, so, uh, anyway, so back then you had a lot of people, a lot of young hormonal, there you go. We'll use that word. Very, very hormonal young people back then, just like you have very hormonal young people now. I mean, people are like, you know, back then there was fornication, you know, um, this like right now there's fornication. Okay. It, it didn't really stop. Okay. The world kind of just try to channel it and say, you know, where protection. Okay. Um, anyway, but, uh, but fornication isn't just, you know, a guy and a girl. Oh gosh. How do we... I've been talking to <laughs> too many dudes lately. Um, you know, uh, getting it on. Okay. It's not, it's not, that's outside of marriage. Okay. That's not just like it. Okay. Because right now we have more, we have greater means of people say sexual expression. Uh, I'm talking about sexual, uh, gratification. There you go. Instead of using the other words. Um, so, uh, uh, canoodly. So, so, um, right now, I mean, you can watch stuff on your phone. You can watch stuff on your computer. You can FaceTime somebody. You can, you know, uh, I remember when sexting was on the scene because they, like, I grew, I grew up in the era when, when, um, the little blackberries, like when they kind of came out and they had a little ball in the middle, you scrolled around, you know, like vroom, 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 you did, you, internet access was like, what in the world is that? It was just coming around. Um, well, they started putting cameras on the back of phones and you could text pictures back back and forth so there are young people in the youth group that were taking pictures of their body parts and sending it to other people all right so that was like whoa and people you know it was texting sexuality or sexual things to people so people termed it sexting right and so i had people who again were in the youth group that were sexting and stuff like that and it was just like you know there's different means of of uh, sexual gratification okay so now it's not just like you and you know, t- circa 2000 years ago, you know, uh, I don't know, Cornelius and, uh, I don't know. What's the, what's the like female old Roman name, you know, um, I think Patri- Pat- what's the, well, I'm thinking Aphrodite, but that's anyway, whatever. And, uh, I really don't know of a female old name, Cornelius and, uh, I don't know. I really don't know I, for this example, but anyway, um, Delilah, <laughs> no, that's too old. That's not really that era. Um, Priscilla, there you go. That's, that's not, not the good Priscilla in the Bible, but anyway, um, you know, instead of them, uh, I don't want to say Lydia cause that's like, you know, we got people on the stream like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that, but, um, it wasn't just like, you know, them having to, you know, they, they liked each other. They saw each other in a market or whatever when they were picking out fish and whatnot. 
and like they they start talking with each other and then like you know it's getting dusk and then i gotta like you know he he makes a move and she's uh, <laughs> a cleo cleopatra i mean i guess that's maybe that era but anyway so um they they uh you know, like, it's like, how are you going to, like, how are you going to effectively fornicate? <laughs> that sounds so weird. But how are you going to pull that off? Like, really think about it. You know, like, you, you got, like, you know, you got to, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to go for a walk. Then she has, yeah, mom, dad, I'm going to go for a walk. Well, you don't go out for a walk as a young little girl, you know. So it's like, how do they do it? Like, they had to be, like, really sneaky about it. Just like young people are sneaky today. Okay. So, I don't know, probably, like, you know, ran to a field. All right, I'll be at the field at like, you know, when the sun's over the, the, the rooster's nest. I'm like, okay, right, bet, let's go. <laughs> so I don't know. So they go run in the field and like, oh, they, they leave the field all like, you know, what they did in the field. So um, more than just, <laughs> never mind, I'm not going to go there. Okay, so, um, but you know, like that now? No, now it's like, you know, mom and dad just, they don't check their kid's phone and you could FaceTime whoever you want to FaceTime from anywhere around the world and you know uh engage in things that will sexually gratify you over the phone you know that old song you know that's that's so ugly how do i know that song uh, anyway but um yeah so so it's like no you, you like there's you can't you there's so many different means now so is that technically fornication you know because you did you didn't technically you know touch her you didn't technically touch him you didn't technically use your genitalia like it that, that really didn't happen well if you look at um the word uh fornication in the original is pornea which means um illicit sex illicit sexual intercourse i think so what what's happened is that there's the the letter of the law back then and there's a spirit of the law okay so it's not that you know, you know, oh, well, technically I didn't do anything with her. Technically I didn't touch her. Technically he didn't touch me. It's not that, that lends towards fornication. Okay. Fornication is, is that, that illicit, which means illegal. Okay. So illegal sexual. So think about it. Illegal sexual. Okay. So first off, what is, so there's illegal sex and there's legal sex. What's illegal? Well, first, you got to define what's legal. So what's legal sex according to the word of God? Legal sex according to the word of God is when a man and a woman go get married. They say, I'm going to live with this person until the day I die. Okay? The problem is that's a hard deal to live with another broken person. I mean, sometimes we can barely live with ourselves. Man, why did I say that? Why did I do that? D to another person? Okay, anyway. So you, you and this person are uh, uh, together. And you're going to get irritated with him. You're going to get frustrated with him. You're going to get mad. But you're, you guys are supposed to serve each other after the image of Christ. So you're going to, you know, man, man. So what did God do? God said, let me pull this out of my pocket. And I'm bam, on the earth, right? And he blessed, you know, Adam and Eve, man, male, female, men and women, with this, with the, 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 like the pinnacle, the peak of physical euphoria. Okay, which everybody who's of A starts with the O. Okay, I didn't say it. Though. I didn't say it. All right. So God said, let me put this in the marriage covenant and the marriage bed be undefiled. That's legal. Okay. Now, that was supposed to happen between a man and a woman, not a man and a woman and their TV screen and a man and a woman. So you can't bring things into your marriage bed. Okay. But you're going to have a marriage bed. Okay. <laughs> thing better rock okay <laughs> i hope i'm not i was literally thinking about that yesterday morning i said i'm gonna get married soon oh my goodness that's crazy then i said so i started listening to a lot of uh, marriage stuff on focus on the family or from focus on the family all right so i'm listening to that they, they make aio so i was like i'm interested hands but anyway so um, i was listening to that and it's talking about stuff like this so it's kind of funny how this is brought up but the man, the woman they love each other so it's like hey marriage bed undefiled you it, the man and the woman just focus you can't allow anything else don't allow you know your 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 imagination to go wild you can't allow the rom-com stuff or what do they call it the erotica you can't allow that in the relationship ladies and men you can't allow what you see on the phone in your relationship you can't don't don't keep your mind pure and then you guys go ham like when you guys meet you know you guys get wedding night like this one woman says she said it gets better in time that's how it's supposed to be your wedding night so again, yes, 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 yes. Ooh. 
<laughs> okay. <you> guys, <laughs> there are no comments right now because everyone doesn't know what to say. But anyway, so, you know, it's all awkward and stuff. Like, you know, you're like, okay. <laughs> kind of excited, kind of scared because you don't know how they're going to react. You don't know how you're going to react and all that weird stuff. All right. Literally no comments right now. That is so funny. Is this stream live? Give me a thumbs up if it's, <laughs> if it's still going. Everything says the stream's healthy. So <laughs> anyway, um, seriously, drop a <laughs> thumbs up if, if everything's good. But anyway, so, um, you know, okay, camera got it. Okay, so, you know, you're nervous, you're a little nervous, like I said. And then, you know, we're like, ooh, wow, wow, amazing, fireworks, okay? That's often when uh, um, couples' first, like, arguments happen. It's like the honeymoon because, like, yeah, there's a lot of – I still don't know why. I'm, I, st I, I haven't read the articles on that why, you know, but – um. Uh, <laughs> uh uh sex other than what gossip made sex for sin exactly so so you know the 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 guy you know, that's so that's so weird but anyway so um he makes his move the girl's like yeah baby um that's that's how it's supposed to be pure in mind pure in body no one else come in the relationship and you guys just go together and again better in time okay so don't don't think that you know, it's it's uh, don't buy what the world's telling you. The world's trying to pervert or taint the purity. No, you guys are pure. You know, you know, do y'all thing. You know, they're like, I'm just going to say this and I'll move on. You know, there's a uh, OK. You can go to you can go to Walmart. You can go to Rayleigh's, you know, whatever your grocery store is. You can go to a grocery store. All right. That's you two coming together. All right. Listen. Some people leave the onions, okay? Some people leave the broccoli. Others, they like the onions and the broccoli. They like the stir fry, okay? Other people, sweet tooth, right? They like, you know, they go get the pastries. Other, what I'm saying, everyone's different. Everyone's different, okay? Well, when you and your significant other get together, y'all are gonna go shopping together You're, he's gonna pick out what he likes she's gonna pick out what she likes <laughs> you guys better make some good dishes together <laughs> and you learn in time what y'all like all right cool so with that being said um yeah okay god created it and said it, it was good yeah that's 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 good i like that all right god made it so it's it's cool you know you could go ahead go shopping go as many times as you want shop in the morning shop at night <laughs> so, <laughs> I need to quit, bro. I'm having too much fun. You know, <laughs> shopping the noonday. Shopping, man, just go shopping. That's why the, the men back then, they were they, when uh, when they got married, they didn't do any, uh, they didn't go to war for a year. As in the book of Deuteronomy, they were supposed to cheer up their wife. You stay home. Learn how to saute in the kitchen. Cook it in the kitchen. <laughs> All right. Um, but uh, again, to the question, um, is fornication more than just having sex before marriage? Um, we have to understand what the what the legal stuff is. Okay, the legal stuff is the stuff that God made. Anything else is out outside of that is illicit. It's it's not to be touched. So, if fornication in the New Testament is the word pornea, which means illicit sexual intercourse, it means illegal. Okay, so fornication is anything outside that covenant of marriage. In mind, body, soul, spirit. Yeah. Mind and soul kind of the same thing. So, whenst you are, um, you know, uh, yeah, okay, so, okay. So, it's um, more than just having sex before marriage. Yeah, so if you're doing that, um, that's fornication. But also, if you're, you know, uh, sexting, if you're, you know, just anything that is, um, Engaging your sexual urges and like gratifying you sexually, that's outside of the covenant of marriage. Because she was supposed to do that and he is supposed to do that. That's their job. Okay. Not yours or not, you know, anybody else's. That's outside of the covenant of marriage. It's your husband or wife's job, whichever if you're male or female. Okay. Um, so it, it's, 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 it's not right. Okay. It's almost like talking about the conversation about emotional adultery, physical adultery. You know, you can commit emotional adultery. And you can commit physical adultery, okay? Kind of the same thing where it's like people don't really think about the emotional stuff as readily as they think about the physical stuff. 
But when you think about fornication, you think about just two young people, you know, having sex when they're, you know, out by themselves and stuff like that. It's like, well, wait a second. No, you also have to think about the phone. You have to think about the, the, um, that, you know, things done alone, you know, you have to think about all those things. And it's like, no, you want to keep that in the covenant of marriage. Cause that's where it's supposed to be. It's actually not supposed to be anywhere else. So if you're not in the covenant of marriage, you're not supposed to be there. You shouldn't be tapping into or engaging, you know, things, uh, sexual things before then. And I'm thinking, I'm talking about things that, you know, gratify, not like you're, you know, going to school and you're learning about the birds and the bees or, um, you know, premarital stuff. Cause you know, you're gonna have to talk about it beforehand. I mean, don't talk about it too far. Right? Cause you know, you start talking about your significant other. You like this girl, you, you are attracted to this guy. And you start talking about like stuff you ain't supposed to be talking about. Likely, you know, it's going to be like, well, we're going to, we're going to be married anyway. And you don't want to sow that distrust into your marriage. No, just wait. And I wouldn't talk about it. I'd be like, listen, you know what's up. I know what's up. Y'all, you already know what's going to happen on wedding night. We don't want to talk about that until we need to talk about it. Um, and I don't think there's, when it starts moving to the, into the vein of gratification, okay, that's when you got to pull back. Hey, babe, no, no, nah, 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 we're not talking about that. So I like you way too much. And I do not trust myself. So you stay right there. Uh, no, stop that. No talk. No talky like that. Um, cool. So, um, let's go to the next question and we're going to wrap up here in just a few minutes. All right, cool. Um, how can I tell the difference between being called to be a servant in the kingdom versus being called to ministry slash leadership? Well, ministers are, are, uh, servants in the kingdom. Okay. Um, there's different types of ministries there's ministries of helps. As it said, uh, there's the fivefold ministry, um, so there's many different types of ministries and you want to make sure that you're, um, that you're, um, you know, sitting on a pew is not the only thing you're supposed to be doing. Okay. You're supposed to be preaching the gospel everywhere you go. So just because someone's behind the pulpit and you're not, doesn't mean you're not a preacher of the gospel. You're not a disciple maker. Okay. Just because someone is, um, uh, I don't know, uh, online ministry, whatever it may be, just because they're doing that does not mean that you're less of a minister. No, you're a minister as well. Okay, we're all we all have the great commission. So you're going to be, you know, you're standing before God and God's going to be like, hey, oh, why didn't you go teach Bible studies and do that stuff? Well, I thought I was supposed to be on the pew. No, you, everyone's a minister. Some people just have more people looking at them on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. OK, so everyone's supposed to be a minister. So um, what you do is you find out what the will of God is for your life and you link up with that. You say, OK, God, I'm going to do exactly what you want me to do. I'm going to do exactly what you say. I'm going to be focused on what you want me to do. And if I stand behind a pulpit or people know my name, um, that like, uh, like saints know my name, you know, um, whether min, min, uh, ministers, leaders, preachers, pastors, you know, if they know my name, presbyters, whatever it may be, that, that, that's, that's irrelevant. Okay. I'm the people who may know my name. Like I know this account on, on, uh, so, uh, on social media. One is, um, apostolic baptizing, baptizing Jesus name, filled with the Holy Ghost. They go around um, literally just driving around the United States in like the ghettos and they're just baptizing people, preaching the word. People are coming. They're baptizing them and, and uh, they're getting filled with the Holy Ghost, baptizing them in Jesus name. From New York to Chicago to um, Atlanta to uh, Houston to um, the Bay Area, San Francisco, uh, San Jose, like they, they literally go on tour. Like they have a bus and they got like a little baptistry, not a bus, but a, a van. They got baptistry in the back and they just go around doing that. But saints, they don't, the saints don't really know their name. The sinners, the sinners know who they are. And there's a guy that I was connected with. Um, he does martial arts. I do martial arts. I do the same type of thing. I haven't seen him in like in years. I go to his social media page and find out that he's connected with this dude. I said, wait a second. So this guy, this tatted up, you know, bar fighting dude, like he's hard. He's actually connected with someone who preaches Jesus name, baptized, pre preaches his name, baptizing his name, the oneness of God, Holy Ghost, fit, like infilling of the Holy Ghost. And bro, I've never seen this dude, the, the tatted, let's say his name is um, Carlos. Like Carlos was a guy, you know, we, we did the same martial art together. You know, he's, he goes out there, fights, whatever. Carlos. Okay. I've never seen Carlos at any church in our area. I've never seen him. I don't think, I don't even know if he goes to church. Okay. But this dude who's Acts 238, oneness, 
and going around preaching. That dude impacted Carlos. Carlos doesn't know nobody. Carlos doesn't know, like, our, our district superintendents and all that stuff. He doesn't know that. He don't need to know that. He needs to know Jesus, and this man's bringing him Jesus. So you could be that person. You could be that person that's on a pew just sharing Jesus to everybody, saving, like, thousands upon thousands of people, having 10,000 Bible studies over the course of 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, I don't know. And you're just doing it consistently, but you don't have a place and a position in a church. Dude, who, who cares? You have a position in the, in the, in the, in the church, <laughs> in the kingdom of God. You're a, you're a disciple maker. You're a baby maker. Okay? You didn't you didn't make the baby. Get him baptized, you just ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. So it's not, it's not, um, so again, for the question, how can I tell the difference between being called to be a servant in the kingdom versus being called to ministry and leadership? You got to know what God wants you to do, and you can't do things based off your feelings. Some people want to be behind the pulpit because they think that's the only way to minister. Don't do what you want to do. Do what God has in front of you. Do that. Le like fill your being with that, and the Holy Ghost will um, lead you. All right, that's what you want to do. Let the Holy Ghost lead you for real, for real. Um. Okay, let's move to rapid fire. Okay, when's the Yappa meetup? Okay, I think we had these before. Maybe did I, I, okay. Anyway, um. When's the app of meetup? Um, we're going to be meeting up on Zoom August 4th through the 5th. <clears throat> Again, we're going all, <clears throat> excuse me, virtual. It's going to be a completely virtual event, and um, which I'm excited about that because we've uh, reduced the ticket costs like tremendously because of that. Um, so we're completely virtual. We're going to be um, unstucking, what I call unstucking people, and we're going to be going for hours, like targeting the number one things that you need in order to minister effectively. Um, if you're going to be ministering, or if you're, um, if you know, if you just want to have a, a, a life saturated with the blessings of God, then um, you're gonna you're gonna want to be at the United Life, okay? I, literally, like, we, if you want the fire of the Holy Ghost to con consistently be falling on you, you're gonna want to be at the United Life. All right, next week, fourth through the fifth, August fourth through the fifth. Wait, next week is it? It is next week. Yeah, next week, August fourth through the fifth. And I pull my calendar. Yep. So this day, seven days from now, we're going to be joining on Zoom and we're going to be going in because we're going to be so much good stuff uh, to, 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 to get through. Um, we're going to be destroying insecurities, making you like, we're, <laughs> oh my gosh, bulletproof. <laughs> bulletproof. People are like, hey, you can't do that. You can't be bulletproof from God. Then how? Yes, you can't. Yes, you can. You don't walk in the, in the in the principles of the Holy Ghost. All right. So anyway, that's um, United Live. You're going to want to check it out. Firestartercommunity.com for slash United Live. Again, ticket cost super, super low. And and um, it's going to be completely virtual. And uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited about it. Um, tell us more about the United Live. Okay, cool. So you asked for it. All right, here we go. Um, we're going to be uh, going from, not, uh, I think, about 930 um, central for, uh, for everyone, for the East coast sake and for the West coast sake. Um, well, actually more so the East coast, East coast sake. <laughs> we're going to be going, um, uh, at nine. All right. And so we're going to be going for, uh, we're probably about 12 hours first day. Okay. This is intensive. This is, this is like, it's like a minister's conference, but online and for young people who feel the call to ministry. So we're targeting a very specific demographic. All right, then, um, but that's just Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to have um, opportunities for us to uh, talk about our different ministries, talk about the callings that God has for our lives. If you don't know your call, don't worry. We're going to give you the roadmap to find your call. That's worked for literally every other person, every everybody. Everybody, because that's how God operates. It's eternal, okay? So if you don't know your call, you'll find, your, you can find, well, you get the roadmap to your call because we're not going to, we can't really go up into heaven and like tell God, God, give him the call. Okay, so that's the only thing we can't do. We'll do everything else except for that, okay? <laughs> that's beyond our pay grade. <laughs> but anyway, so after that, um, we're going to be looking at uh, the number uh, the, uh, the number one hindrance that you have um, and that everyone has demonstrated in the word of God that has ever been hindered by um, uh, within their ministries, okay? Um, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, the, the humanity, the human side of hindrances, how to overcome those, and the demonic side of hindrances, how to overcome those. Spiritual warfare, okay? And, and the difference between the two. There is a difference between um, 
your uh, flesh and demonic things and how to war against them properly. We're also going to be talking about how we can utilize the, the tools within the scripture, all of the tools, fully, in their fullness, consistently, so that when we do go to war, we're armored up, ready to go, whether we're fighting um, the devils or we're fighting the things that have held us back ourselves and uh, completely annihilating those things. So, I mean, I, I literally do not know. I mean, uh, real quick, Elissa can attest to, the, uh, attest to the fact that, like, I was going over some of this stuff with her. How in the world, like, I, I was I, like, how in the world do you, I, what can the devil do if we're really linked up like this? Like, seriously, like, how, like, that's nuts, dude. If we're linked up like this, if we're each individually operating in the power of the Holy Ghost, it's just, dude, it's crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know how you cannot. So bring a pen, bring a piece of paper. We also have a, a, a notebook for you guys. A digital notebook you guys can go ahead and take it and download it so you guys can take notes 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 you guys can take all right back in business um unity is powerful and needed love opportunities link up like that well yeah well not well here in in, in this year um uh no th uh so this year haven um i like what you're saying because this year um we're we're actually focusing on the individual like we're focusing because if we can if we can be stronger individuals um stronger uh young people if we can be stronger um then uh we're then it would, like if we can figure out how to, if we can make ourselves unstoppable and then we bind together we are for real unstoppable like for real for real okay so the things that are stopping you, just imagine, think about everything that's stopping you from the, the things of God, the things that God wants you to do, the thing, that operation, that living in the, in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, that the pillar of fire, right? All of those things, like those things that are stopping you, those things can be handled. Those things can, it's, it's in the Word of God. The blueprints are there in the Word of God. We source them from the Word of God and those things that worked in our personal lives, and then we break them down and show you how to use them. How did Moses become Moses? How did uh, Joshua become Joshua? How did David become David? How did Gideon become Gideon? How did, you know, uh, man, all the, you know, how did they become them? Paul become Paul. Peter become Peter. How did that happen? It happened through very straightforward principles of growth. And it's our job as a, a, a teaching ministry to step up. In the fivefold ministry, okay, teaching, teachers over here, you know, woo -woo, yappa, teacher, all right, and say, hey, this is how we're supposed to do it. The preachers are preaching it. The evangelists are going out. They're doing their thing. The pastors are, are, are doing, everyone's doing their part. Well, our part is to say, hey, this is how you actually strengthen yourself to where you go out there and you're unstoppable to the best of your ability. Literally, hell can't be, think about this. Did God give hell the power to beat us? No. So then why are we defeated? <laughs> and okay, I'm not, let's be real. I'm not talking about shouting on a Sunday night. I'm not, I'm not defeated. No, I'm talking about like, why are people getting caught up in certain sins? Why are people, things happen? It's not the devil as much as it is us. He has a part in it. Yeah, for sure. As much as, it, as much as it is us, we. we're the ones, we, me, you, we're the ones who stop ourselves. How do we unstop ourselves? How do we unstuck ourselves to believe for everything God has for us, to believe that what God told us was going to happen is actually going to happen? How do we not fall in the pitfalls of Abraham and produce an Ishmael that produces, you know, problems that we have in the Middle East today? How do we not do those things? The blueprints in the Bible, all we're doing is aggregating all of the, the blueprints, bringing them all together into two days. 
the blueprints are there. You can, you know, go out there, read the entire Bible front and back, through and through, source from each story, figure out the sticking points, and, and cross-reference them through multiple stories. You can do that. You can do all of that. And, you know, there's no point. You could do that. Or you can come to United Live. All that work's been done for you. You save time, okay? You save life. You get to the, the proper place that you're supposed to be as a young person in the kingdom of God quicker so you can operate better, faster. So you can operate better, faster. And then what's going to happen, I know what's going to happen already, by the grace of God. Pastor will be like, whoa, what's, what happened with her? What happened with him? Man, they're, they're, I knew they were on fire, but now they're really on fire. What's going on? Well, Pastor, I'm just not letting my past hold me back. Well, see, that's the thing. People are like, don't let your past hold you back. That's a cute quote on Instagram. How do I not How do I not do that, bro? Like, my past is pretty heavy. Dude. I, got, I got some stuff. I got some skeletons in the closet, all right? <laughs> how do I not do that? That's what we're covering at the United Life. That's what we're wanting to just completely eradicate from your existence. If we could do that, we've done our job. That's what we want at the United Life. So get your tickets to the United Life. Get your tickets to the United Life. Next question, and then we'll bounce out of here. Are you going to General Conference? We should meet up and hang. Yes, I'll be at uh, General Conference. We should meet up and hang. Whoever you are, let me know who you are. We'll probably do something Yappa fam related. So if you guys are going to General Conference, be on the lookout for uh, info, info about that. Um, yes, we do have to get a picture. Um, oh wait, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Someone, someone asked if I was going to general conference, uh, what's going on with your music, any release date? Um, you know, we're just, uh, we're just doing actually, um, there's just a few things I have to learn, but I have not taken the time to, uh, sit down and have my own little whoop, trace sabbatical. So, um, I need time, time off to, to invest in that. But yeah. So, uh, sooner than later, got another song called messy bun. It's pretty cool. It'll, it'll make your, your car rumble. <laughs> bah, bah. <laughs> anyway, so all right, my friends, thank you guys so much for joining uh, today's Yap Live. I hope it was bless a blessing. I hope it was beneficial. Um, sorry for the, the technical difficulties. I kind of knew that it'll, it'll roll out better later on <laughs> because like, um, I don't know. I just had a feeling usually that happens. Technical difficulties arise and then it flows better anyway. So thank you guys for being patient with me. I'll see you guys uh, next week. Get your tickets to United Live. Listen, Okay, again, if you can take that, if you can just take the, I, I don't know, oh my goodness, dude, I don't know how, literally there's, oh, I don't know how to quantify, like, what's going to be taught at the United Live. What's going to happen is we're going to ask people, like, hey, how did you like the United Live? Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I learned this, I learned that, and this happened, da, da, da. And you, they're going to be raving, and then we're going to take that clip, and we're going to post it on social media. Hey, this is what everyone's saying about the United Live. And they're going to be like, oh man, I should have been there. Oh man, I said, and then you know you can get the replays. Okay, we're gonna record the um uh, the replays. But we're gonna sell them. Okay, honestly, I'm just being transparent. We're probably gonna sell them more than the ticket price. Okay, why? Because you get to listen to them over and over and over and over and over again. And then we're gonna include some cool little stuff with the recordings. But um, this is probably gonna be the cheapest you're gonna be able to get this stuff. Okay, so just do it. I mean, there's no like it's 27 bucks. There's no like it's. It's 50% less than the original ticket price that we're going to charge at the for the for the actual event. Okay, if it's a price thing, it's not going to be it's it's not going to be like any cheaper, and it's only going to, the prices are only going to go up. Okay, and that's under the unction of the Holy Ghost because there's other things that the Holy Ghost has, you know, that I have to fulfill, fulfill on on my end of of Yap as a ministry. So I know that like, hey, I don't think we're going to be able to keep the prices like they they are. Um, so listen, just, just do it. There's like no reason not to Okay, Thursday and Friday, August 4th through the 5th, two day event, virtual event. Okay. You get, oh, come on, dude. It's just, it's so, it's, it's so sweet, dude. It's like, I don't know how else to like, unless just, I could just tell you guys, but that's not fair to everyone who's who already bought tickets. If I could just tell you guys, Hey, this is what you need to do with your life and then break it down for hours. Then, um, then that'd be cool. I can't do that. So, um, just got to come to the United Live. Okay, get your tickets, United Live. 
August 4th through the 5th. I don't know how else to say it. Better. So, all right, my friends. I love you guys. God bless. In Jesus' name, I'll see you guys next week, next Thursday, next Friday for the United Live virtual event.